Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing today? It's nice to see all your smiley faces. We welcome you to our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. This is the very first time you're joining us. Hey, it's good to have you here. We're always welcoming new people from all around the world who are checking out this really cool place. We've got a wonderful old school vibe. Think maybe Johnny Carson, Dick Cavett, some of the real traditional talk show hosts and variety shows you remember from the past with a modern vibe and a modern twist of today. We welcome everybody who's watching literally from all around the world. And thanks for all of the feedback, the comments, the support, the tweeting about our series on Twitter at Gym Masters TV and our Facebook page is Gym Masters TV. Instagram, the same thing. You guys write private notes and you share the links and you're truly amazing. We have done, which is really hard to believe, some 461 episodes so far live, just about seven days a week since May of 2020 when we launched this puppy uh, as an extension to my work as a, a television and radio presenter and personality host, journalist, actor, and writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist. Narrator, writer, producer, all that jazz that you guys know that follow the show all the time. And we launched this uh, as as really as an inspiring way to connect with people. And it's all about inspiration. It's all about entertainment. It's all about good conversations and our famous lovity, which you guys always share. The lovity is really because in the summertime last year, I said the show has a lot of light, love, and levity. And I said it too fast and out came that word lovity and boom. Hey, that's what the whole show has, and it's so cool that you guys can join us. We've got an amazing guest who's joining us live from Toronto, Canada, in just a moment. Look at that shot. <laughs> that's a great way to, uh, <laughs> to begin. Don't you love that? Or this one? You recognize who we're talking about? Our good friend, Matt Dusk. Matt and I actually met in America when I was tasked with being the person to host and interview him on PBS. And that was uh, at one of the affiliated stations and it was for a new PBS special. The response, I could tell you, the phone lines were ringing off the hook that night. People were like, oh my God, I can't get enough of Matt, can't get enough of Matt. So uh, I said, you know what? We've had so many friends coming on the show, celebrity friends from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, theater, culinary arts, sports, food, inspiration, health and wellness, science and nature, and everything else. Uh, Matt's got to come on. We got to get Matt on. So we worked behind the scenes with Matt, with the team, with us, and he is joining us in just a second live from Toronto. He's all comfy. He's got his glass of wine. He's ready to go. Yeah, we love it. We welcome you guys to the Gym Master Show Live. Good to have you here. Hello to all the loveities who are watching all around the world live right now. While you're there, we invite you to subscribe to that YouTube channel, which is the channel you're watching right now, Gym Masters TV, where you can see over 460 plus episodes live seven days a week, which is absolutely amazing. Check that out. And again, if you're enjoying that episode, uh, this particular one or any of them, be sure and click thumbs up. We love when you guys do that. Click thumbs up if you're enjoying this episode and also leave a comment for us too. That is really cool because when you do that, YouTube then takes this uh, episode and boom, they blast it out even further around the world. And while you are on the uh, the, the uh, Gym Masters TV YouTube channel is what it is, when you are on there, be sure and uh, click that notification bell. So that way there you never miss any of the episodes, the live episodes, plus the surprise pop-up shows as well. Hey, let's check in with some of our viewers, our loveties watching around the world. Uh, Maureen is watching in Arizona. She says, good Wednesday evening, Jim and lovely family. It's been a great day here in the desert. She's in Arizona, USA. I'm so looking forward to tonight's conversation, uh, conversation and some incredible music as we welcome Matt to Lovety Hall. Yeah, I told Matt all about the Lovety. He says, I'm all in. Uh, Sherry Larson is watching from Kansas, USA. Good evening, Jim and Lovities. Good to see you, Sherry, and welcome. Mary's checking in from Florida, USA. Hello, Jim and my lovely friends. Good to see you, Mary, as well in Florida. 
everybody that's commenting. Crystal is here from Connecticut. She says, hi, Jim and love it ease. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Looking forward to an exciting show with amazing music, inspiring conversation. And of course, love it tea. You got it. That is coming front and center. More comments coming in here from everybody. And uh, Sherry checked out Matt's music while you were at lunch. I bet you liked it, right? Takes me back to my childhood. Mom, love that style of music. Yes, uh, he is a platinum selling crooner and jazz vocalist. And uh, he's really, really, really talented. And he's a good guy too. Uh, looking handsome as always, Mr. Lovely. Love your shirt. Thank you very much. Can we print that one out so I can save that one? <laughs> uh, and you are watching in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Linda O'Dell, good to see you. And Kathy Short watching in Cleveland, Ohio, USA. Good evening, everyone. Good to see you as well. Alessandra is checking in from North Carolina, USA. She says hello to everybody, to her Lovety family. And Wozniak is here. And she says, hi, Jim. Oh, hi, Linda. So she's checking in, making sure Linda's daughter is doing okay, because Linda was a little under the weather. Uh, here is Anne's official welcome. You know, sometimes these messages go so fast that we, even we can't keep up with them. Thanks for all this uh, energy, gang. Happy Wednesday, Jim and everyone. Looking forward to an awesome, uh, to awesome music tonight and great conversation and more with Matt and company. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Lovely. Good evening, Lovely. It's good to see you, Linda. And we love having all of you guys here. You're just truly amazing. You're so supportive and you're so passionate and you guys are always here. And we love that. Some of you never miss a single show like Jane, who's watching in Sweden. We love when Jane's here. Hello, all loveties and sweet Jim to you as well. Jane and everybody that's watching right now in Europe, Australia, Asia, uh, Canada, our neighbors to the north, and of course, here in the United States as well. And Linda says to Matt, you are a lovely now. Matt loves that idea. <laughs> he says, I'll take it. So cool to have you guys here. Thanks. Keep those comments coming. Uh, we always check them out during the course of the show. And uh, let me just tell you briefly about our buddy here, Matt. He's really, again, he's uh, one cool cat. He's really, really dedicated to his task. And he is a multi award winning platinum selling artist. He's uh, been enthralling audiences around the world for years, leaving in his wake a series of radio hits, acclaimed albums, and a loyal fan base that continues to grow with every passing year. And after several successful jazz and pop albums, Matt returns to his roots with Sinatra, an up-tempo tribute to the chairman of the board himself, the man who sang some of the most beloved songs of all time, originally from Hoboken, New Jersey, USA. Uh, an energetic show that he's got with all the production value of a Broadway musical, Sinatra takes the audience on a musical journey through Frank's incredible career, including ups and downs, hilarity and heartbreak. Through Matt Dusk, you sort of revisit old blue eyes, from his days making Bobby Soxer swoon to his time with the Rat Pack cracking jokes and singing tunes before heading out to hit the blackjack tables, a career that has spanned decades carved into one spectacular night of music and fun. It's like Sinatra at the Sands, according to, to Matt. We'll talk about that as well. Now, after 12 studio albums that have racked up numerous gold and platinum awards along the way, it's interesting that Matt has chosen just now to pay tribute to the man who first inspired him to sing in the first place. I'm going to talk about all of that and so much more, but first, without further ado, let's welcome the man with the glass of wine and everything else. He's all set and ready to go. Matt Dusk is in the house. Hey, Matt, welcome, my friend. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> such a pleasure. Thank you. Ah, you're very welcome. It's good to see you since uh, we were in the same studio at the same time. Now with all the uh, you know social distancing and a lot has changed since we were together last, but we were at the PBS studio and you had that incredible concert special. And I just remember that night, Matt, the phones were on fire. People were just left and right. I can't get enough. And that was really cool. So it's so good to see you uh, since then. We look the same. My hair a little longer, but. <laughs> it was interesting when I was watching you uh, give your debut hosting uh, segment there, I saw your picture with short hair and a clean shaven man. <laughs> I, I think you might be an imposter right now. I could be the clone. I think I'm the clone. <laughs> Jim Jim is sleeping after 461 shows and yeah. this is the clone <laughs> filling in. 
uh, Anne, who's in Florida, in Florida, she's in uh, Jacksonville. She goes, welcome, Matt. Love your voice. And uh, she wants to see you in February. There's two more groups that will be there that weekend. And she's got tickets, but she loves you, loves you, loves you. Thank you, Anne, for those great comments. Uh, Jane's watching in Sweden. She welcomes Lubbity Matt. And, uh, oh, uh, Jane in Sweden says you remind her of a young Richard. She wrote deer, but I think she means gear, oh. Richard gear. I'll take Richard. I'll take any Richard right now. You know, I think I could, <laughs> <laughs> including Richard Dreyfus or <laughs> not Richard Nixon. <laughs> no, 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 no. My nose is smaller. Yeah. Welcome, Matt, from Sherry Larson in Kansas. Kathy Hello, Short Sherry. says, uh, good to see you here tonight, Matt. She's in Cleveland, which is awesome. And I know you've been to all these Very different places. Very close to us in Toronto, yeah. four hours away. Just a little bit of a swim across the bay, and that's about it. Uh, Mary's in Florida. She says, hello, Matt, and welcome. Good to see you. Jane welcomes you again from Sweden. Crystal welcomes you from Connecticut. Uh, Alessandra's welcome you from North Carolina. Welcome to Lovety Hall and your new Lovety family. So now, within just a few minutes of being on the air with us, my friend, you're now a Lovety. How does that feel? With all these awards it's and accolades... Now you're you know, alive. everything I do about music comes down to community. And as a kid growing up, going to, you know, being in a, in a, in a boys choir where we would sing at the local church to throughout my career as being a jazz musician, it was always about having great times with great people that you like and you know. And Jim, you've done a great job of assembling this lovety community that now every week, every day, every month, whatever, whenever they want to join, you've got a really cool group of people together. And that's something you should be very proud of because community is what makes the world go round, at least in my opinion. I agree 100%. Yeah, you absolutely are on the same page, kindred spirits there. It really, really is. And how have you been uh, with all the craziness? You know, we've obviously gone through unprecedented times and it's been a time mm -hmm. of great reflection a time to really pause and see where we've been, where we want to go, what we want to do next with our lives. And I think a lot of people, and we've talked a lot about uh, a lot about it on this series, and that is a lot of people are wanting to reconnect with each other and even with mm -hmm. nature. I mean, we just there's a different inspirational, empathetic, bent, positive movement that is happening, which is really beautiful to see throughout all of that. And, and the craziness of everything the last year and plus months, how have you been doing there in Canada? It's interesting that, that you bring that up because for me, it's been a, a big life lesson, specifically yeah. that, uh, you know, we're taught all these lessons as, as young children, our, our young adult life, but truth is, is that experience does carry um, a lasting weight and, when I was a, a kid, I always had this one, three and five year plan. But as I've gotten older, specifically through the pandemic, I've kind of understood that tomorrow may never come. All the plans that you made may be changed. And it's made me kind of take a moment to appreciate the opportunities that I have at hand because you never know if those plans are really gonna, gonna take hold. So yeah. I, I take life now basically is trying to appreciate every opportunity I can get, which is honestly why um, I'm here with you and all your lovelies. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's really what it is. I mean, staying connected, creative, collaborative. Yep. I usually ask people, how have they stayed creative, connected, collaborative, and sane? It's hard. <laughs> when I say the sane part, people like, Dick, get back to me on that. I'm not quite sure I've reached the sanity part yet, but, uh, but everything else, you know, we're trying and trying and trying, right? It is definitely frustrating because, you know, as, as humans, we do like to be awarded for our, you know, our, our input and our effort. And yeah. when you're going through a, a pandemic such as this one, every single plan that we make can be constantly kicked down the road. So as, um, as an example, some of our tour dates have been postponed three, four times mm -hmm. and you know, as a performer, it's like, listen, this music, we love, when I say we, my band and myself, we love this music. We've been doing it for 25 years. But as an audience member, when you, you, you pay money, which you've earned on your time, 
that now you need to postpone your plans again and again, it can be quite frustrating. So us as musicians, we, we realize that the, the people coming to the gigs, I mean, it's, it's their time and it can yeah. be quite frustrating. So we're trying to keep positive. Um, the, the good news is that throughout civilization, music has always endured and we hope to be there when it all returns. Absolutely. Positive way of thinking about it. That's and, all and, I do, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. That's <laughs> And well said, well said. Um, for those joining us for the first time who may be discovering, and again, we have an international audience live right now. So for those discovering Matt Dusk for the first time, um, tell us a little about some of those early inspirations for you in Canada when you were a kid. What were some of those inspirations? Who were some of those people and those experiences mm -hmm. on your life's journey that pointed you in the direction of this fantastic career that you have now, Matt? It's 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 a good question. Um, you know, my my mom was born in a very small town on the the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania, so I spent a lot of time in rural, um, I guess the Rust Belt, I guess you could call it. Um, very small town, one one industry town. Every weekend, uh, we'd spend three days uh, down in Pennsylvania, and then four days I'd spend up in, in Canada, but I did spend it in a city. So the urban side of it, we got a lot more attention from media. We'd get all our news sources from NBC and ABC and CBS and such. Um, but the, the fun part was going down to the rural parts of the states where you would have a, a town that wouldn't have a stoplight, but would have a stop sign. And you'd have the corner store and you'd have the bar. And then there would be like people who would uh, come out from the community and play, play music. So as a very, very, um, at a very early age, I was introduced to all sorts of live music. Cause you gotta remember I was born in 1978. So in the early eighties, no one had cell phones. <laughs> right, too, none <laughs> in of that. town, there was like three or four stations. Like I said, CBS, NBC, uh, ABC. And uh, we'd go down to the local pub because they'd serve food, we were always allowed in to watch some live music. So immediately I was drawn to this sense of community. Yeah. Um, in the local cities, specifically in Toronto, up in Canada, we have you know four, four or five million people at that time. You would be introduced to larger bands, big bands, orchestras. And I started to hear the music of Nat King Cole, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Frank Sinatra, and there is no sonic property, no speakers can give you the same effect that a live band can give you. And that was my, uh, I guess my um, indoctrination into the community of music. And I've been doing it ever since, and I'm now close to 43 years old. So music is something that makes the world go round. What is it about the style of music that uh, you've taken on that you do so well, Matt, that attracted you? you you've, you've got a, an incredible repertoire of music and uh, it, it's, it's really ex kind of extraordinary. Uh, what were some of those influences early on for you, people that you admired, you looked up to? Of course, I know Sinatra obviously being huge for you. Yeah, I mean, was, there's, there's Perry Como, there's uh, Tony Bennett, there's Dean Martin, Sammy Davis. Um, the, the one thing from a young kid going to church and singing music is that the repertoire was always written within a certain range, a certain octave that everybody could sing along. So even if you were a terrible singer, you could sing along with the choir and the music of the thirties, forties and fifties from Irvin Berlin to Cole Porter were again, written in that same range. So it was a natural progression from going from a pipe organ to a B3 organ with some swing. Yeah. And I love the fact that when I would, for example, go to these nightclubs or these restaurants as a, as a young kid or as a young teenager, people would sing along and it was a tune that everybody could carry. And it's, it's been interesting to follow pop music over the last 25 years because if you see what's in the top 40 now, a lot of music is returning to this uh, community of being able to sing together. So when songwriters are writing, they're trying to like make this part of the chorus to go like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And 
when I think back to the Sinatra stuff, it was always like, fly me to the moon. It's the same melody. It was just be different lyrics. So I enjoy that music because, again, it just brings people together to sing a song together, maybe poorly, but nonetheless, <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> But it's that sense of camaraderie and community exactly. and people just having a really Karaoke. good time. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, you've, you've come a long way. None of it comes without blood, sweat and tears and sacrifice and hours still, put in and travel and, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's the nature of all these industries. And so you have to really love it. You have to really be passionate about it, which you definitely are. And I knew that when we first met, you know, when we were on PBS, you're, you're really into it. You're all, you know, you're gung-ho, you're 110% in. Um, for you, what would you consider some of those early opportunities, door operating, opening opportunities that really got things rolling for you? Were there one or two things that happened early on for you that sort of paved the way for what was to follow? It's interesting that you should should ask that because I'm sure in your own career, you kind of look back and go, yeah, I was given some opportunities, but at the end of the day, I just wouldn't take no for an answer. And I'm sure that's why you're still here. And that's why you're still doing your own show. Like, you know, 400 plus episodes is no small feat. As I said before, the um, we went live, I said, dedication is the most needed thing for success. You need to be working hard and the harder you work, the luckier you get. And as a, as a young kid, although I loved to play in small venues and I, I found any opportunity such as, I mean, you got to remember back in my day, there were, there weren't even CDs. It was cassettes. <laughs> so sure. Was like, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I had to go to the, the karaoke store and buy my own cassettes, but I would get gigs and I would perform at these gigs and I would just love playing the music. And what happened over time was one gig leads to another. And sure enough, um, I was given the opportunity to be in a, a part of kind of like, I guess uh, America's Got Talent, but mm -hmm. uh, on the Canadian side, it was kind of done through these um, local uh, fairs and circuses. So they would, they would travel through every single city, big city in Canada, and they would have these shows that would invite amateur talents to come up on stage and to perform. And I think the year that I first got, I guess you could call it a small break, but there was like 700 contestants and I won first place. It was, um, you know, at 19 years old, making $1,600 singing music was a big deal. Yes. <laughs> and it kind of gave me a, a, a taste of the rewards of the hard work. And then, you know, that was 1996. So here we are almost 25 years later and I still have the passion that, I love and the same passion that you do to be an entertainer. Exactly. We love bringing people in to share. What are some of the things that um, inspire you to do what you do? Obviously, you know, it does take a lot of resilience and tenacity and not every day is always perfect, but uh, there's an inner drive, there's a tenacity and there's sources of inspiration. I, I would imagine, of course, the response, the energy, and the feedback from the audience, which I know you and, and many others I've had an opportunity to chat with here on this show who are in the performance side of things are, are greatly missing and it really feeds your soul when you have that, you know, they're right there in front of you and they're cheering you on and there's this relationship you have with the audience. That's a source of inspiration. What are some other things that inspire you to, to do this work? I, so before the pandemic, I was I was very fortunate. It was like in, in jazz music, we we have this thing where when I was a younger kid starting out, people were like, oh, he's too young to sing this music. And every person comes from a point of reference. So I'm sure when you have told stories, 
as your listeners have told stories, they're coming from a specific point in their life. As they get older or more wise, they have more experience to add to those stories. So as a singer growing up, singing the Great American Songbook, I was often dismissed as mm. uh, being too young. So if you look at a comparison to say Tony Bennett, who just recently retired, having sung for 75 years. And with Lady Gaga. Like, <laughs> who has that kind of position that they can say that they've done the same thing for 75 years? Who does that? Well, in I this wanna tell you something right now while we have a audience that's watching. I'm yeah. booking you now. So 75 <laughs> years from now, we will regroup. I mean, we'll have you back uh, on between that time, yeah. but I'm gonna book you now 75 years from now, <laughs> August 25th, plus 75 years. Do we'll it. have you back and we'll see how things, <laughs> and you know what? Somehow we're gonna look this the same. This music will still be here. I and we're gonna to look God, the same. Here. You and I yeah, will yeah. look the same. Hey, there's somebody watching well, while you're saying mentioning that. Hi everyone, Ann Rutledge. I have followed Matt across oh, the country Anne, and into the wonderful. States as well. He's that special. And she says she's been following you for 20 years. And Alessandra, yes. North Carolina is like, please come to North Carolina. Jane please in Sweden says, please come to Sweden. So they're already putting their orders in, Matt, the Lovities. Uh, they're putting their orders in. <laughs> it's 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 hard to find a community that loves this kind of stuff as much as your fans do. So thank you very much. They really, really do. So. Uh, you know, I've had I've had similar uh, situations where you know in the, in the early years where uh, my speech pattern was older, the way I carried myself was older, but my look younger, uh, and they would say Shaven, the same thing. Short hair, yeah, and they would say <laughs> the guy back there, yeah, in the in the graphic, yeah. uh, and they would say, um, you know, you're too young. Uh, and I was, you know, at that time, but still they were, I guess, judging it by age versus experience and, and uh, all the, the drive and everything else. So there were a couple of times early on in the career, right out of college and everything, where I heard that too. And that can be frustrating, right? Because then you have to, there, there's two ways that people react to that. Some people fold up the tent and they disappear and they say, oh, if it's going to be like this in the beginning, I don't know if I have the will to, you know, trudge forward where others take that, which I did. And I'm like, uh, let me go in the other direction and prove them wrong. And then you go from there. And I imagine the same thing with you. You just trudged forward and kept moving forward. It's, it's interesting because unfortunately, as we get older, we, we kind of realize that revenge is good because you can use that energy to push you forward. But as you get older, you're just like, no one cares about me more than myself. And that's okay. We, we create a universe of which we live in. So when I was using the I'll prove you wrong model, it really didn't do anything more for me. It just gave me more like, I don't aggravation. know, spite or anger, <laughs> aggravation. And as I've gotten older, it's kind of like, holy crap, I haven't realized the entire world that, that I live in is a sandbox that I create. And That's everybody, right. it's like a giant beach. And everyone's got their own little sandcastle. We can all go in and we can all play together. But ultimately, we create a world into which to invite people in. And yes, when I was younger, I was not as good a performer as I am today. However, there were certain things, naivety specifically, which gave me the opportunity to try a little harder because I was ignorant. So experience does give you more tools, but the, um, the ignorance does give you the opportunity to create the opportunity to give more mistakes, which mm -hmm. involve, which basically makes you learn. Right. So all the way back to now, 25 years later, it's it's the most beautiful thing because now I have the carrot and the stick. I know that the carrot, although I will never reach it, as long as I'm constantly reach for, reaching for it, 
I'm going to probably learn something along the way. What are some things that, you know, for anybody watching that's considering jumping into this uh, arena, what are some of the things Don't. you learned along the way? <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody says. They say if they say if you're 50-50 between being an actor or singer, performer, what have yeah. you, or the other 50 is you want to be an accountant, be the accountant. <laughs> oh my God, if I want to make money, be a lawyer. Be a lawyer, yes. Uh, what are some of the things you learned along the way and, and most notably about yourself, Matt, as you were going through these experiences and, and perfecting and fine tuning and growing as a performer? I'm sure a lot of people have answered the same way, but you know, wisdom does seem to repeat itself. Um, when I was in university, I was very fortunate to take some master classes with a very famous piano player by the name of Oscar Peterson. And we would sit in the class and he would sit there and he would tell us stories um, about who he met, who he played with, certain certain things that happened in his life. But one of the, the, the first things that I took away is he said, listen, if you're gonna do this gig, you gotta do it because you love it. And it's, it, it's not always an hourly job. You don't get paid by the hour. Sometimes you can work 60 hours and make no money. Sometimes you can want make, uh, you can work one hour and make the same in 60 hours. So you really got to understand that the, the money side of it, the business side of it is a byproduct of the actual art and dedication side. Yeah. Um, I've learned that throughout the years as I get older, I've also learned to have some confidence where I can say no. That's a big thing. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners have learned that saying no can sometimes be difficult. Do you know, it but, took me a long time to be yeah. able to do that too. I was always, yes, sure, absolutely. You go home, I'll take care of it. We talk a lot about exactly. that on the show too. And, and still I struggle with it too. Uh, I use the analogy where the oxygen mask comes down in the airplane and they say, put it on you first before you help yeah. the person next to you. I was always raised, I was always of the ilk and still it, I twist in my chair about 10% when I hear it, when they say, put it on you first. I was always of the ilk of help thy fellow man, do them first, then yourself. But then you learn over time, you have to put the mask on you first. They have to put the mask on them first in order to be yeah. able to help others. But it is difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it's difficult. And that's just because we're, still young <laughs> we're not wise it's, yet it's, it's <laughs> or we're Unfortunately, we, I, 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 or caring and empathetic is what we are right we want to help everybody we want to you know think of others first and then sometimes then you do yourself and and you gotta it's taken time to learn how have you learned along the way uh hanging out with people who might be jerks <laughs> <laughs> like I've, I've, I've had the, the that will do it. <laughs> well, I mean, you've interviewed a lot of people and I'm sure yeah. you have some people who are like, Oh my God, this is terrible. Why am I doing this? And the same thing is throughout the, uh, my career being in the music business, I've met a lot of artists who have come and gone yes. and the ones who usually come and go are the most arrogant and ignorant. Yes. yes. Not to say that they're all like that. Right. But God, like you, you, you need to have some respect for others. And usually the, usually the ones that are, you know, jerks, it's just like when times get tough, people don't want to help you. Right. And unfortunately that's a byproduct of the entertainment business as, as I'm sure a, num a number of people watching have read through variety or people magazine. It's just like there, there, there are certain people who are more difficult to deal with, but maybe they're more popular but for people like myself who love the music i've met countless uh celebrities from paul lanka to uh, michael buble to harry connick jr to tony bennett i have wonderful wonderful rapports with them and there's a reason why they're still all around today exactly right uh, you know, class and dignity, respect, and all of that still counts. It still matters. I've always been mm -hmm. definitely of that ilk. Uh, you, you know, be good to people and uh, help lift one another up. Try to inspire through your art as much as you can, because you never know when you're going to be that person who needs that. Hey, man. Too. 
this is the one thing I've learned about music is it's not about you. It's about how the other person receives it. So as a listener of music, That's right. if I'm going through a, through a tough breakup or if I've got like a really crappy day or I, or on the other side of it, maybe, maybe um, I just had a great day. It doesn't matter what the artist intended. I am the recipient of your music. So how I feel is the most important thing to me, just as when I meet an artist or I meet uh, an audience member, if they feel a certain way about my music, who am I to take away their pleasure or their, um, That's what's right. the word I'm looking for, 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 for their connection to it. Right. We are all just vessels that communicate an idea and ultimately we end up here on your YouTube channel. On the Jim Master <laughs> Show live yes. communicating. Um, <laughs> tell us about the, uh, the Sinatra, connection and this fantastic show that you have we've actually got a clip or two here we can show that they sent along oh, i want to watch this yeah <laughs> and uh and, and i i think we're good with copyright we'll probably find out in a second but uh just do it your, your, what, what was it about uh you know this this love of sinatra and and wanting to put a show together that really captures the essence and the flavor of the man and the music still with your essence blended in as well. All right. Now. So I'm going to give this to you. Can you pull up that picture of you in the background with your clean shaven face and that handsome haircut? Oh, you mean that one there? <laughs> <laughs> so at some point. That guy? <laughs> you yeah, that guy. Or, or do you mean guy this guy? This guy? <laughs> oh, it looks like a young Andy Williams. How cute. Oh, Andy Williams was great. There you go. This guy at the ocean, my Zen place, the ocean. Oh my God. Uh, I think you look younger now. This is terrible. This is, that, you, you figured out the secret to life. Yeah, of course. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I, Andy I mean, Williams was team, great. I always liked Andy Williams. And Andy Williams is like, it's very interesting talking to the younger generation because they're always kind of going like, Andy who? Is that right. uh, Serena Williams' brother? I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Andy this, Ronick, this, is, this, is, this is the one humbling thing about music is that you're constantly fighting with being relevant and, and also being remembered. And the truth is, is that ultimately nothing really matters. It's like you got to do the best gig you do to, to communicate. I mean, as a, as a kid growing up, I grew up, I mean, I started turning my teenage years when it was kind of the whole grunge scene with Pearl Jam and Nirvana. And here's all these guys like running around with guitars and scraggly hair and plaid shirts. And I went to, you know, an all like a, a, a choir school where we dressed up in suits and ties. So here I am as a young teenager and I see Frank Sinatra wearing a suit and Dean Martin and, and, and Sammy Davis on stage with cocktails, smoking cigarettes, hanging out with hot girls. And I'm like, I want to be these guys. And <laughs> their music was very, very similar. And I, again, back getting back to the vocal range yeah. of the, the choir music we were singing. And I was like, this is one step right. It's not like going miles and, and leaps and bounds. So these guys were being grown men. Yeah, I was a teenage boy. So I looked at them and said, why can't I be like them? And that's that's how I dived into the music. They were grown men, basically singing romantic, yeah, music that made me feel like, oh, I can do that. Yeah, with a certain debonair nature and a Absolutely. certain swagger and swoon to it all. It wasn't necessarily blasting in your face. It was just a certain smooth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, was it on in the house? Did your parents, did your family, did your mom and dad, did they have this music on as well? And you heard it growing up and that triggered that for you too? Well, my, my parents loved to listen to classical music and they would leave this local radio station on that would play classical music on. But around 9.30 at 10, they go to bed and flip over to jazz music. So I'd hear everything from Charlie Parker to, to John Coltrane, Chet Baker, and all the great most of it was yeah. instrumental music and as a young teenager who wants to do good in school sorry i didn't i mean i was <laughs> like let's delay the homework time till as late as possible <laughs> and we'd have this non-verbal singing like there'd be no singing it'd be instrumental music and i would listen to jazz and i fell fell in love with jazz 
And it wasn't until I heard Sinatra's voice around 16 or 17 years old where I went, who is this guy? Yeah. Who is this guy? And I mean, Sinatra is still relevant today. I, I know younger, a lot of younger people don't know who he is. He basically invented the entourage. He basically invented hip hop culture. It's like he, his music and what he did was leaps and bounds what most artists do today. Yeah. And, you know, a different time. I mean, there was only like three or four television stations that would air anything. And it's much harder to break through now, but Sinatra is still relevant today. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And you pay homage to him beautifully, my friend. And we actually have a clip here we want to show. Uh, you just, Matt, you're just too marvelous for words. <laughs> oh, I love that song. <laughs> you want to uh, preface this at all? Where we, where I don't you know. Were? We're watching. Oh, is this? Uh -huh. Oh, this is from our live stream. Okay, yeah. So um, my one gig of the year last year was in Warsaw, Poland, and um, I love the song "Too Marvelous for Your, for Words." It's a uh, it's a very short tune, but it was uh, the arrangement with the that we that we do was a uh, a reduction of a Sinatra Basie recording that he did live on TV, but never ever captured on record. So here it is, "Too Marvelous for Words." You got it. All right, enjoy everybody. Then we'll be back with our special guest on the Gym Master Show live. Matt Dusk. Uh, while we're playing this, feel free to refill the glass if you need to. I'm Matt. going. You're going. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> All right. You're just too marvelous, too marvelous for words. Like glorious, glamorous, and that old standby amorous. It's all too wonderful. Never find the words that say enough. I tell enough, I mean, just ain't swell enough. You're just too much And just too very, very To ever be In Webster's Dictionary And so I'm borrowing A love song from the birds I tell you that you're marvelous Too marvelous for words You're just too much And just too very, very to ever pay to ever wind up in that fat dictionary and so i'm borrowing a love song from the birds i tell you that you're marvelous tell you that you're wonderful tell you that you're marvelous too marvelous for Mm. Way too short. Should have been longer. Well, you had to pour that quick. <laughs> Did you spill any? <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, back in, obviously back in the 50s and 60s, it wasn't uncommon for tunes to be two, two minutes long. And then, you know, the Beatles came along and they kind of became two and a half minutes, maybe three minutes. And then you know, we go in the 70s and 80s and there's Queens doing like five minute tunes. And now we're back in 2021 and they're back to two and a half minutes again. So, And even that's <laughs> long sometimes, depending on oh, whatever the Lord. music is. <laughs> I want to show you some of the feedback from the Lovities since we do our show live. Fantastic voice from Jane in Sweden. Uh, Maureen in Arizona, USA says, wow, oh, wow. I could listen to your music all night long, Matt. Absolutely incredible. Mary Bishop Thank in you, Florida, Maureen. USA. Fantastic voice. Wonderful. Uh, Ann uh, Wozniak in Florida. Bravo. Marvelous. Fantastic. Hearts coming in from Jane. Um, Dawn says, wow, Jim, you look good, man, Jim. Oh, I like that. Can we print that out? <laughs> okay. From dawn to dusk, right from there. From dawn to dusk, right there. <laughs> Hearts coming in from Sherry in Kansas. It's nice to get the instant reaction. And, uh, you know, the feedback is really important, right? Because it lets you know that people are resonating with what you're doing, right? Well, it's it's a conversation. I mean, music is always a conversation. The, the the most difficult thing with the pandemic is making me fall in love with a lens, or as I like to say, how two thousand and one. You know, it's like <laughs> I I I I miss I miss 
going to a theater yeah it's never about me this is the one thing that i try to explain a lot of artists uh would agree with me there are some that don't but when when myself and my band we go into a theater it's not about glorifying ourselves and feeding our ego for a lot of us it's about experiencing the music with others think about 20 30 40 years ago when you were you know maybe longer when you would line up at a record store when you would wait for record release day when you would when you would get that new uh, James Taylor or ACDC record and you would be unwrapping the cellophane, uh, cellophane, reading all the lyrics, reading all the liner notes, getting home, calling your friends over and sitting in front of two speakers and experiencing history. Mm -hmm. This is what we do in our, in our live show. We are trying to make people go back to that moment where they first heard that song or when they first danced with their father at the, you know the, the 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 father and bride dance. It's it's about reimagining those great memories that we all experience. Mm. Instead of uh, taking the wrapper off the uh, the albums now and yeah. waiting in front of those Brutal. stores for hours, now they do it for the latest iPhone instead. <laughs> Sucks. It's it's uh, the world has changed. <laughs> it's it's funny as 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 a forty two year old, I've kind of got gotten into vinyl. Um, of a lot of my favorite old records yeah. yeah, because the vinyl doesn't allow you to fast forward. So you need to sit with the artist's album and mm -hmm. experience the music the way the artist intended it. Unfortunately, right. with today's um, click, click, press, 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 I have a five-year-old daughter. I know exactly what she does. We're all about getting to the instant gratification, but sometimes certain songs take time. Just as your show, when you started on episode one, <laughs> you're like, who's tuning in? Right. And now after 400 shows, you're, you're developing an audience. And I, and I think artists are not given the service of their true talent now because it's very fleeting now. What yeah. can you give me in four seconds of the intro? Right. Where before we were given a whole side of our record, we were given 22 minutes. Right. Do you find that frustrating? Because you are a storyteller, wow. because there's a certain, there's a feeling to it all. It isn't just about the, and I talk about this a lot, actually, with a lot of colleagues in the industry. And just, you're obviously, you've got an old soul. And it's it's obvious, it's there. And an old soul though, you know, appreciating what others have done before that sort of paved the way for the things that we do in these industries can find it uh, sometimes a little tough only because again, like the world is spinning faster and faster and faster and, and not giving us enough time to create that feeling sometimes, that connection, that warmth. It isn't just about click, play next, click, play next, click, play, you know, it's, click play feel then go on to the next one yeah uh, savor relish and i'm that way i've always been that way even as a kid whenever we did anything whenever i accomplished anything wherever we went family vacations anything i'm the one who's always in the car wow wasn't that amazing let's talk about it let's let's yeah. relive what we just did wow You're so old yeah, it's an old school guy here i tell you <laughs> but uh, I, I I, I think I think one of the, the the biggest lessons of life that I've learned at least you know my, my limited time here is um, you create your own world you are you are on your own so you can spend your time complaining or you can spend your time building relationships with people and like-minded people who want to share with you so I am kind of what you would call a, a millennial pioneer. I'm right on the cusp. I was involved with technology. I had a computer very young. Um, I was on MySpace and face the Facebook years ago. The However, Facebook, though, yeah. I don't use it anymore <laughs> yeah. because as I've approached uh, my age now, I have too many people I want to see. I want to spend time with. Yes. Um, right. And so we're talking even though about, yeah. 
like as an example, so people are like, oh, so how many people do you play for usually in a show? And I'll be like, I don't know, could be 50, could be 3,000. Yeah. But I give each gig the same attention. Uh, doesn't matter how many people, because there could be four people in the audience. It could be 400. It doesn't matter. We're all there to experience something together. So stop trying to get more. Just try to get more better. Right. <laughs> you know more I mean? better. <laughs> better. <-er. laughs> Poor grammar skills, but whatever. <laughs> no, it's, it's right. It, it, taking the time. Uh, yeah. abs absolutely. And, you know, the old soul within you obviously speaks to that. And, uh, and that's a cool thing uh, to, to have because, again, it just enhances what it is uh, you're doing. Uh, Ann Rutledge says, I have Matt CDs on every time in my, my Saturn. 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 I love it. Now that's old school. I love you. <laughs> when, uh, when I hit the road, uh, and that's Matt. <laughs> if, 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 I can make, if I can make one mention about Ann, one of the, the beautiful things is that music, we would have never met if it wasn't for music. And yes, mm -hmm. Anne has come to our shows for the last, I don't know, 15, 20, 20 years. And she makes one mean walnut brownie that my band and I, we still talk about. She brings us brownies. And, you know, some people say oh like, my God. oh, we well, love her already. <laughs> how could you dare eat something from somebody you don't know? And I'm kind of like, most people... I would say 99.9% .9 of people are good people. I'm not going to yes. change my life depending on the one in a thousand that are not. And Anne has been a blessing because not only does she come out and see our shows and on occasion brings us brownies, but when you see her face light up when we perform, it's the same feeling we get. So all we're doing is sharing in the stuff that no one else knows about. Right. It's great. Yes, that's that's what it's all about. And, you know, when you have people who support and love and care like that and follow and they're there with you, I call them on this show, the love at ease. They're here every single day, exactly. 400, you know, it, it's it's unbelievable. And they open up about their lives and they share with you. Uh, there was a couple doing it earlier today. They were sort of down in the dumps. Things were happening in their life and we we're trying to, you know, lift them up through however way we could. And uh you know, there is a responsibility to what we do as well that sometimes, you know, people can forget that there are so many people that can easily be moved and inspired and touched by what I do, but what you, by what you do. You know, it's part of who we are. It's part of our careers and everything else. But we do what we do for the love of what we're doing and the, the storytelling and communicating and connecting with people. But sometimes you never realize who you're reaching until they write you a letter or send you an email or you see them beautiful at a, stories at a supermarket. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. they feel comfortable. Um, which I think is, that's the part where there is the responsibility of knowing that, uh, you know, we've taken on these roles in life and there's a lot of people that are truly, you know, touched. But if you're a good person, ultimately, I mean, you're going to be, like I don't change. I, I'm, I'm me. I, I, you know, exactly. when I've, I've right had on. the opportunity to hang out with uh, Tony Bennett, I mean, he's always been the biggest champion of like, bro, just yes. go out. It's a gig. Go out. Do yes. It. Love it. Yes. I mean, um, how many people do you know that have done seven decades of one gig and felt happy about it? And I look mean, forward to it and write. Yeah, I mean, and Tony Bennett has not always had an up and up career. He has been on the verge of collapsing yes. many times. Yes. So all you got to take from it is like, Jim, when you meet a fan or you meet a levity or you meet an artist, if you're going to be a jerk, right? <laughs> then that's you. But yeah. if you're going to be who you are and going to be a gracious person, right. a gracious host, Right. There is no ending to what you can accomplish. This is the thing. It's like I've met so many celebrities over the years. I just don't want to see them anymore because in my head, I just want them to be my best friend. <laughs> 
there can be this expectation that doesn't always yes. match. Uh, yeah. There's a uh, you mentioned Tony Bennett, one of the best. I met him once uh, through a PBS uh, production, and he was nothing but gracious and warm. Mm. And Andy Williams, the same thing. Uh, for me, uh, Judy Collins, who I had interviewed, she was same thing, warm and affable. Carol Burnett, one of my favorites, uh, the real deal. Carol Burnett. Yeah, warm, she's funny. Uh, no airs about her. She's she's just quick witted, funny, warm, approachable, and uh, she has since passed. But Florence Henderson was another extraordinary person. Uh, people know her, of course, from the Brady Bunch uh, series, but much more than that, she was just absolutely what know, a cool incredible. gig you have. That's a pretty cool gig, man. It's uh, You're very grateful. Uh, I very, yes, I, mm -hmm. uh, I believe in gratitude and that's a big thing. I know there's some of these things that are so in vogue now, you know, people talk about empathy and gratitude and inspiration. I look back in, at my life and I've never been different. I don't know any other, I, I'm not doing anything now that Set I wasn't doing cut. when I was. Sorry, man, you've got yes. long hair now. <laughs> long hair now, long hair now. Uh, it's like, I, I'm not saying anything different and I'm not operating any differently than I was when I was 10 years old. I was always empathetic and, and friendly and uh, it was just who, I don't know any other way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's something that I've realized, uh, you know, Crystal says, sounds amazing. She's in Connecticut, she's enjoying it as well. And cool. Toby says, hello, Toby is watching in Encino, California. She says, howdy, Jim, and hi, Matt. Hello, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be? That's the question. Uh, you're a good singer, Matt. It's from Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. That's really fantastic. Yeah. So um, what are Funny some Funny enough, the though, it's like, it's, yeah. it's like when she says, uh, Dawn says I'm a good singer. You know, I was very fortunate as a, as a, as a young kid to have some very amazing teachers. And this is... This is one of the things that I hope that my daughter and her, you know, friends will have growing up is is the music that I that I sing specifically. I, let's let's take music out of it, but let's 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 rewind the clock forty years ago. How many people were great uh, steel workers, or or great carpenters, or great musicians, or great tradespeople? The unfortunate part of the of the the global world is that we're not having many local guides on how to become great at something. So, as an example, in the the late '90s, when I was given a teacher, because I went to university for for jazz, when I was given a teacher, um, his name was Bob Fenton, and he played piano for Chet Baker, Billy Holiday, Zoot Sims, great sax player. And I remember when I was in school, he was like, listen, man, you can't sing jazz. You are terrible at it, but I'm going to teach you. And it, it's, it's, I'm hoping that as we get older, Jim, you're probably gonna have to give some courses on how to, to, to do an interview because <laughs> a lot of the younger um, people that I, I, obviously when I'm doing interviews in, in different cities or countries, they're younger and they don't know how to conduct an interview. Just as the same thing with music, it's as a singer, the reason why I have the ability to do well is because I was given the opportunity yes. to learn with people. And this is kind of like, I, I want to find the next Sinatra. I want yes. to find the, you know, the next Johnny Carson. I want yeah. to find all these things because yeah, what is the world without great teachers. You know, I appreciate you really saying that because, uh, you know, this is the second time we've been able to do this on, on first on television and now here on this show. And uh, it's interesting you point that out because a number of people have actually said that to me, uh, that I should You're be so teaching <laughs> others. <laughs> yeah. Where I should be teaching others how to do the kind of work that I do and also uh, public speaking. Uh, there's a lot of um, leadership coaches and executive leadership coaches Absolutely. and motivational speakers that I've interviewed in my professional life on television radio that are like, Jim, my God, you should really be, you you should, I, I'll get you in touch with the CEO of like Ford or whoever. 
and, and some of these folks who are major players in major companies are brilliant at what they do. But when it comes to communicating that and speaking it's publicly, hard, boom. Very hard. Um, I love ad lib too. That's why I love to do this show live. We could easily and probably would make my life 50 times easier because I'm so busy during the day to pre record all of these and just throw them up there. But to me, as you know, as a performer, there's, there's really nothing like live and there's nothing like that immediacy, the energy, the passion and the interaction that you get from that. And that's, you know, why we, uh, do it. Jane in Sweden says our gym is capable of anything kind, gentle, sweet, warm to people he meets and talks to. Thank you very much. Uh, can we print that out? Or? <laughs> I think <laughs> can't, I can't I, print I, these is, out. Don't are it? you paying her? Are you giving her $20? <laughs> I was gonna say, she's up yet. Wow. Well, I don't know. She didn't need more than that. You know why? Because she's in Sweden where it's almost what? 2, 3 a.m. And yeah. she's here all the time. Good music transcends all ages. Matt, your I genre agree. of music will live forever because of great performers like you. Uh, you know, I agree. And and that's the key. Do you feel like you are? I'm old. <laughs> that's been a theme tonight. Huh? Are you and I old? No. No, we I love it. <laughs> it's so funny. It says I, I often make fun of my elders because they're <laughs> older. Uh, um, but the truth is, is that the reason is because they are the wisest, most inspiring people. And when they beat themselves up about being old, I'm just kind of like, are you joking? You have figured out everything yeah, that I've wanted to figure out in life and you beat yourself up about it. This is like- I've always um, uh, hung out with, I've always been attracted to older when I was a kid too, because yes. they they've been through things they've accomplished. They've, they know the ups and downs, the breaks, the ins and outs. And I've always been, my mother is the youngest of 16. So the relatives on her side of the family, because she's the youngest, those relatives wow. were older than my mother because my mother's the youngest of the 16. So the aunts and uncles would be older. So I always gravitated towards uh, folks who had been there, who, you know, laid down it's the tracks. It's a beautiful thing. Oh my Lord. Wisdom is like the, the biggest gift. It's the biggest gift. And as, 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 an, um, as a performer, remember most of my idols are in their prime. 15 years past where I am now. So when we look back, say for example, we look at Frank Sinatra and we look at one of his best live records ever, ever. He was 50. He was eight years elder than, than, than I am now. Now, if, yeah. if you give me eight years, I'm going to try my darnness to learn as much as I can to catch up, to be a fraction of how good he was. It's an inspiration. The problem with music nowadays is that we, as a society, we want to um, engage the youth and covet their youth. But the truth is, is that, yeah, they look good. They got nice hair. But the truth is though, they're really not gonna be great singers and probably until they're 50, because that's when Frank was his best. Right. And right, that's, yeah. that, 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 that's my guideline. So that's why I'm always kind of saying to, 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 to hang out with Tony Bennett or Harry Connick Jr. or Paul Anka, it's like when I'm with him, just talk to me. Tell, tell me a story. You can tell me about the time that uh, your laundry wasn't ready for your trip to Munich. I don't, I don't care. Just <laughs> tell right. me what I should just, expect just, on, the, on the road of life. Yeah, right, exactly. That's amazing, you know, that you're talking about these uh, – these folks who have sort of laid down the tracks and who, cause those are the folks in this industry for me, like I talk about Johnny Carson and Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Dick Cavett, Crazy. Dick Clark. So good. The, the, the folks that really were out there doing, you know, all that heavy lifting. And a lot of times there aren't, I, I've seen sometimes people not necessarily appreciate the ones who did all of that 
in the early yeah. days, they, they're like, oh, well, they're done. They're over. I don't have time to appreciate them, respect them. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so opposite of that. I, I always pay homage to and appreciate those who did it and did it with less resources and less capability in terms of like uh, the technology and the advancements. I mean, they had to really plug things in and build things from scratch and keep Cue things cards, going. Man. They didn't have they teleprompters. Had to, they had to right. be on their feet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and make magic happen, which not everybody these days appreciates all of that, you know? And uh, that's an unfortunate thing. I always have, and I know you do, uh, but just by some of the folks you've listed that, you know, you admire. Um, if we were to uh, check out your record player or your iPod or your boom box or whatever you've oh, got in Lord. there. Yeah, it's all what weird, would be in stuff, it? man. What would be in a lot it? Of, a lot of electronic dance music. You would, you would laugh. Um, I find that there is a certain genre of music, uh, specifically electronic dance music from like Calvin Harris to David Guetta that basically are subscribing to the same mandate that standards did. It was music that was written within uh, an octave, stuff that you could go to a concert. It was very interesting. I, I had the opportunity to go see a uh, Coldplay concert um, at a stadium. Uh, maybe about two years ago before the pandemic happened and just being able to watch that show and to see 60,000 people, you know, with their wristbands, colored wristbands singing along. I felt like I was at my own show. It was a different, it was different music, yeah. but there was an engagement there. That's like for those two hours or an yeah. hour and a half, 90 minutes, we didn't think about, the laundry cycle we got to put it into the dryer <laughs> we didn't think right. about my visa bill is due in two days and i'm short 400 bucks it was like music provides an experience that escapes you from reality and grounds you it grounds you to the earth which is why we're all here it's we're here because we're connected to this whole thing music yeah. you can make money at it yes you can make money at art but truthfully it doesn't matter when we hear a song by Elvis Presley or we hear a song by uh, Nina Simone, if it, if it connects with us and we escape for those two or three minutes, let's never forget why it's there. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Comedies like that too. When people watch, you are know, you a comedian? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Irish on my father's mother's side. So yes, I think it's inbred. It's a good joke. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's something, well, gee, everything we've been through in the last 18 months, you have to have some levity in there or, you know, you'll go crazy. Um, I think it's a matter of also uh, balancing life. Now, Alessandra says she's not old. She's 49 years young with lots of uh -huh. experience. That's a good way to look at it. That's a beautiful way to look at it. Absolutely. And and uh, Austin Fields has another excellent show. Thank you very much. Uh, Toby says, uh, I actually interviewed him and he was a great guy and still is. Dave Koz, have you had an opportunity to work with him? I or Dave uh, Koz uh, perform in concert. Um, it's terrific. When, yeah. I was, when I was a kid growing up, long story short, uh, I love smooth jazz just because it was like cross oh, so pop. I. I love it too. But there was also, there was no vocals, which for right. me is, as a singer, I love. Refreshing, right. Oh, I love yeah. instrumental. I'm a huge collector of instrumental and uh, there's some amazing smooth jazz artists. Uh, you know, Brian Culberton. Yes, isn't he amazing? Yeah. He's really yep. good. Peter White, the guitarist, yep. is fantastic. Uh, even going back to Spira Gyra, they're great. Uh, the Rippingtons, the Yellow Jackets. Man, everyone's got to remember Kenny G. I mean, he was the Kenny first G. <laughs> He was the biggest. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yes, Mindy Abair, she's fantastic on sax. Uh, Alessandra is saying here, Matt, Matt, first time I've heard your music. Love it. Fan for life. Uh, Thank you very much. And another one of our fabulous love it. He's saying music takes you away from all troubles and life's obligations. Yes, I no agree. And more like washing cycles. Here no more washing cycles <laughs> and those bills and that lawn to mow. Jane says, uh, Jim, don't change. I think I appreciate that. 
<laughs> very much. <laughs> You're amazing, Jane, where it's 3.13 a.m. Um, you know, on your bucket list of things that, uh, and I'm sure it's a big bucket list, but of the things that you want to do going forward as we've had this time of great pause and reflection, uh, are there places you'd like to for, uh, perform at, venues, people you'd love to collaborate with, things that you want to do going forward, Matt, since uh, you and I are so old and time is running out? <laughs> It's, 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 we funny have lots of time on our hands. Keep moving. Well, it's, we, we often talk about the pandemic and how it's changed our kind of plans. And yeah, I have to say that the one thing about music that I've realized is that music owes us nothing. It doesn't matter what career you've had, it doesn't matter where you are in life. Music is there. You can take from it as much as you want. Um, as a performer, I have to tell you all of my stories that I could tell you most of them inappropriate uh, <laughs> come from <laughs> being in places of traveling and yeah, yeah i have missed that opportunity to connect uh specifically a lot of the markets that i perform well in such as poland or germany or france they're not predominantly uh english-speaking countries and though technology has improved and we have Google Translate and we can all talk with our hands, um, the one thing is, is that no matter where we go in the world, is that if you can sing Fly Me to the Moon on any stage, people will turn their heads. And that's still on my bucket list to go to a bunch of places I still haven't had the chance to perform in yet. It could be a karaoke bar, but that, yeah. that's all my, my plan of things to do. Why do you love what you do so much? It's obviously, you know, as I mentioned, you're all in, you, you give it, you're all 110% and you're always perfecting and working hard at it. Uh, what is it that drives you? Why do you love what you do so much? Some of those blessings. You get to drink on the job. It's perfect. That is part one. That's what gets you through the night. <laughs> and you take the Tums at 2 a.m. <laughs> oh my God, I don't drink that much. I'm not, I'm not that bad. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, again, it's a nonverbal, it's a nonverbal communication. It's the, the, there is no job in the world that allows you to go anywhere, not speak the local language to open your mouth and connect musically with somebody and to start on a bass. You know, when iPods first came out, we used to joke that going through someone's iPod playlist was like going through someone's purse. What will you find? How many Band-Aids? How many candies? Like candies will you find? What will be in there? And that's the one thing about music that I love the most is that no matter where you go, you start, it's a language. So as, as an example, as a jazz performer, I can go to China, I can go to Indonesia, I can go to South Africa, and I can say, fly me to the moon, C minor. We might not speak the local language. One, two, yeah. one, two, three, four, doom, 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 doom. And, and music itself is a language. It, it's it's uh, a different type of language. They're asking you now to sing that. <laughs> Fly me it. to the moon. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, you sing it. Da, 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 da. No, okay, perfect. <laughs> You're terrible. Uh, Toby's loving it, and music is magical, and music's yeah. universal language. And uh, welcome to Los Angeles. I can help you out. <laughs> perfect. Toby, Toby says, partner nice. Already. Yeah, you got the duet partner already signed up here. And uh, Maureen in Arizona says, uh, I was going to ask you if you would sing Fly Me to the Moon for us. <laughs> sing. <laughs> I tell you, I, and uh, Alessandra had said the same thing. Um, very, very cool to do that on the spot like that. 
and we do we have i was gonna say it's uh it's it's interesting story you know gone with the wind took almost 10 years to write uh paul mccartney's yesterday took almost 18 months and songwriter bart howard who wrote fly me to the moon wrote that song in 20 minutes sometimes (laughs) things take forever sometimes just you can catch lightning in a bottle and it's a great tune but the one thing is they can't take that away from me there are many many crazy things that i would like to say to you and with your permission may i list a few the way you wear your hat the way you sip your tea the memory of all that no no they can't take that away from me the way your smile just beams the way we sing of key, the way you haunt my dreams. No, no, they can't take that away from me. We may never, never meet again on that bumpy road to love. Still, I'll always, I'll always keep the memory of. The way you hold your knife How we dance till three How you changed my life No, no, they can't take that away from me No, they can't take that away No, they won't take that away Because they can't take had away from me mm, nice comments coming in smoothly done my friend amazing from crystal in connecticut fantastic mary bishop in florida Big sigh. So fabulous. You sing from Alessandra in North Carolina, USA. Maureen says, uh, your amazing voice gives me all the feels just about perfection. Toby in California says, uh, awesome. These are our loveties, my friend. Kathy Short says, nice. We love that. Thank you very much. Toby says, happy ears. Hearts coming from Linda in Florida. Uh, Sherry Larson in Kansas, love how you caught his essence. Wonderful. And Toby loves this. Alessandra says, ah, big sigh, so beautiful. Thanks, Matt. Linda says, love this. Maureen says, Swoon City. Thank you so much, Matt. I knew it would be great. Mary Bishop says, very nice. Uh, and claps and hearts. Oh boy. <laughs> and uh, Kathy Schwartz in Cleveland says, uh, I'm back just in time to hear the wonderful voice and Thank nice you. and magical and all that fun stuff that our loveties love to share on the Jim Master Show Live. Linda says, beautiful in Florida as well. And uh, what's not to love? Good stuff. Uh, nice, huh? So. If you weren't having a good day at all, Matt, you just come to Jim Master's show live and the spirits go. <laughs> Jim, when are you going to learn how to play piano so we can do our big duet? That's that, the question. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. I would love to do that, my friend. <laughs> we'll be on you stage play together. Instruments? Uh, guitar, I do. Yes, guitar. And uh, I studied well, violin when I was. I studied... Let's sing a song together. Let's do this. You want to? <laughs> I have to have you back. So we can do oh, that. Oh, you're kind of like skipping well, out here. Well, I'd have to actually walk off the set as the host, and you can't do that. I mean, okay. I'm a professional. I'll host a lot of stories about you. The, I've done the, some Wikipedia stuff. I'm yes. Like the one that I <laughs> would use is on the second floor. Anybody up there, bring it down quick. <laughs> but uh, we'll have you back, and we will plan something. We will do something. I won't just uh, intro you on stage. I will do something with you. Uh the daughter can teach the piano. 
what about you? What are what instruments for you? How about instruments? I play keys very poorly. Um, my uh, my daughter's learning how to play keys very quickly right now. It's cool, amazing yeah. with technology what you can get on an iPad. Yes. Um, as 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 a kid growing up, I had to go to these stupid schools and play these like stupid rhythms. Now my daughter plays an iPad for two weeks and plays like Bach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just ridiculous. automatic. Yeah, they just yeah. soak it right I mean, up. I mean, the 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 cool thing is that everybody in my band is a is is a real professional. They they are at the top of their field. They've learned from some of the best in in um, you know, in in the world. I mean, the top the top of their field. Um, it's it's interesting enough though. It's a it's a kind of a tough time for musicians right now because as as um the the world has shifted from physical media like cassettes and and vinyl and cds into streaming most of the revenue that us artists make is from being live live in concert and unfortunately right. you're seeing a mass exodus right now of a lot of these 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 fantastic musicians and you kind of wonder where the world will be um in a few years so we're hoping that we can all get back to touring very very quickly Yes. Uh, you mentioned there are some things, you know, God willing with everything with this COVID craziness, but uh, in the United States, actually, right, that are forthcoming for you? Oh, yeah. yeah no, I got a ton of dates. They're, they're on my website, mattdust.com. We're playing everywhere from Florida to, um, I mean, listen, the States is, I, I got to give a plug to the United States. I mean, spent there a lot of time there uh, in my childhood. The United States is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited in my life. I mean, you go everywhere from Washington, you know, the Northwest to California and in, in the Southwest uh, to Florida, Southeast to Maine, Northeast. I mean, you guys got everything and we're, we've got a bunch of dates kind of coming up. So if you're in the area and you, you're able to see us, please do come join us. We would love to entertain. You uh, still have family connections in Pennsylvania? Oh, I have lots of family. <laughs> um, just like with, with you and, and your mom having a lot of um, yeah. siblings and cousins, uh, the majority of my family is in the States, but they're scattered throughout the, the whole the whole place. So the, the lucky part of, for me is where, whenever I tour, I don't have to stay at a hotel. <laughs> I just have to perform. <laughs> we some we did some more digging on my mother's side of the family, and we found 100 more relatives. Actually, we didn't realize wow. we had any relatives in Canada. They settled a town and a mountain in New Brunswick called Kirstead Falls and Kirstead Mountain in New Brunswick, and that turns out, out to be my mother's grand my mother's mother's side of the family. In doing some of that uh, family ancestral digging, some relatives dug that up. We're like, my God. Yeah. You'd be surprised. Americans and Canadians yes. have a lot of common values. So it's like we are we are two siblings that always argue. One yes. bigger than the other. <laughs> but always there for each other. Always there for exactly. each other. Um, one of the blessings of this, this pandemic is I'm sure, even though you're not out gigging and you're not on stage, is the time, the quality of time you've been able to spend with your family with your Kill child, with your, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the interesting thing about being a musician, and I'm sure a lot of your um, other guests talk about is there's a dedication to the art that does not necessarily equal a uh, monetary response. So we put a lot of time into our art, um, but it does take up quite a lot of time. In the beginning of the pandemic, uh, myself and my band and our crew, we had lit literally driven about a thousand miles over two days to, to start our tour of which when we were going to arrive at our first destination for our sound check, we were told our entire eight week tour was canceled. And you got to understand from a person that just drove two friggin' days, it's a little bit of drag. The one benefit was, is that, we had to drive back two days, but we got to spend some nice time with our family. And I kind of miss not being responsible and just watching Netflix. 
<laughs> so unfortunately we all got to go back to work at some times, but it was, it wasn't a wonderful time to spend a year with my daughter. So. Yes, exactly. My wife, not so much, but that's right. <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of the uh, the guests in, in the performance arena have been saying that they've been like, you know what? In many ways, this has been a blessing for them because they've been able to do things that they haven't been able to normally do, focus on projects and things they've always wanted to do and try different things that they haven't been able to have time because they're always out pounding the pavement and this has given them some time to be able to do some of that uh either inner work for themselves or connecting with the family or just pausing breathing and recalibrating as well and uh you've done some of that along the way i'm ready to get back to work man screw this stuff <laughs> it's what like product what product do you use to get the hair to go up like that that's what everybody wants to know Dude, I seriously, I literally woke up. This is what my hair looks like. It's just, it just does this. I don't know. There we go. Does that look better? <laughs> like, <laughs> there we go. It's back to normal again. I, um, I, used, I used to have that product, but I ran out of it. I want to, I got to, got to, got to get another order of it. You know, next time I get a haircut, I'm going to send you I think some. It looks cool. It looks you good. Can, you can enjoy it. I like it. It looks, it looks cool. <laughs> now is everybody happy that you got that question answered? Yeah. <laughs> I know it makes fun of my hair. It just doesn't do anything. No, I think it looks cool. It looks absolutely cool. So you got some gigs coming up. That's good. Congratulations. And we do have um, gigs. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a, problem though it's like most of our shows for next year they're already talking about postponing again um which kind of delta sucks. variant the delta bit ah it's just like you know not to get too much into the the the, the, the whole thing that's going on because i'm sure everyone's sick of it right now but um <clears throat> it's you know at the end of the day what we do as a as a career what what musicians do what what theaters do th there is a monetary side of it and it can become quite troubling when you know look at all the restaurants that have had to kind of endure during uh covid it's 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 been it's been a challenge for them to to stay open so obviously we as musicians us as uh entertainers promoters we want to get back to work so the only thing i'm asking is that if you see an opportunity to see a show um understand that there are people that really, really want to, to, to try twice as hard, three times as hard to entertain you. So please do support them. Absolutely. I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause there's, there's a lot. I'm there's getting paid for this tonight, right? This is the whole thing. Alessandra says the, the grayish <laughs> white in your hair looks good. Thanks. I've been trying to get this since I met Tony Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> the grayish white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that's not pandemic related, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, maybe we'll you find may, out. That's it. But no, you said you said it so beautifully too, because uh, you know sometimes we forget that there's these. You know, if you have a concert venue, there's stores and hotels and restaurants and cafes, and that all depend on what's happening at that baseball stadium, the football stadium, the the concert hall, whatever it is, and even you know with some of my colleagues in, in Los Angeles, you know, who are on Hollywood sets and things of that nature. When you have that kind of a scenario stop, I mean, even in my world here in television and radio, a lot of the studios were empty. Um, the yeah. television stations, radio stations where I work, nobody in the building here. It, it's a six floor television studio and there's only five people in this building, everybody working from home, everybody doing yeah. stuff from home. Uh, there is going to be I, I, some of that's going to remain. I know with certain types of industries, they're yeah, going to just, but, but I, I gotta, I gotta just interrupt, uh, interrupt you for a moment and just, you know, because I want to speak directly to your fans who are, who are tuning in. You know, as a, as a young as a young kid growing up, as I as I said, I listened to jazz as a young kid, instrumental music. I also went to school in downtown Toronto. Again, millions of people. I yeah. was uh, in the thrust of the hustle and bustle at a very very young age. There was a jazz club one block away from the school I went to, and I'd always walk past it as a kid. 
um, I always wanted the opportunity to go be an adult and to go see live music and live jazz. And, and I remember I, I, I built up the courage to ask this young lady out when I was 18 years old for a date and we went to dinner. And when we were at dinner, um, they asked us to say, will you be joining us for the show upstairs? To which I said, yes. I said, well, there'll be a, a $10 cover charge. You know, this is going back 20 years. It's probably like $100 now. <laughs> but I was like, absolutely, we'll go upstairs. And sure enough, there was a, a, an artist in this, this club. It only sat about 100 people. Mm. A little known artist at the time by the name of Diana Krall. Mm -hmm. And I got to see her perform when she was starting out. So you never know who you're going to see when you go out and see live music. You That's could right. be seeing the next Diana Krall. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, that that experience cannot be mimicked Not at all. online. Next time might be with 10,000 yeah. people. <laughs> right, right. And there's just something about the energy of it all. And, it, and it's a tough, tough thing. So I know some industries, you know, that don't require any of that, they'll they'll do the working from home thing. And, and that works for that kind of business. But other kinds of things, being out there and, and getting amongst the people is is essential. I mean, how's a baseball team going to do it from home? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just no so such Jim, thing. No when's such the next thing. time I'm going to see you? I mean, like this is all fun and grand, but well, you, know, you know, there's we uh, probably got to go and like see each other in person at some point. I agree. I always say to the guests, we got to break bread. Um, one city, I know I've been to Europe. I've been like, you have traveled around as well. Um, I have not been to Toronto yet and I can't believe it. I have not been to uh, it's Toronto. It's the uh, third largest city in all of North America. So it, you got to hear come. that, folks? <laughs> known for, it's, it's, besides Matt Dusk, known for what are a few things for the, uh, this is our travel segment with Matt Dusk and Jim Masters. He's going to tell you a little bit about Toronto and why you should come. Toronto okay, is known so for what, five what, things. What do you do? What do you do when you go to a city? Like if you're going to, if, if you're from like, Des Moines and you're going to go to New York city. What are you going to do? You're going to walk. You're going to, you're going walk. to go to restaurants. You're going to yes. go to, you're going to go to a bunch of museums. You're going to go to um, a bunch of restaurants. You're going to end up in some random bars that are the size of li literally your bedroom. And then probably at the end of the night, you're going to probably have somebody invite you to hang out with them on their balcony where you can, share and share stories. I mean, Toronto is a, is a very multicultural Is that what city. you have planned for me when I come? Sounds pretty good. Oh. <laughs> you know what? You that can, you can good. ask Anne, Anne Rutledge. She'll tell you all about all her visits She's in just Toronto. Yeah. Great hearing you and Jim have a great conversation tonight. Hope to see you soon, Matt, in concert. Yeah. <laughs> If you've if you've ever gone to New York City and experienced what New York has to offer, yes, we're just a little farther north, right? And if you get bored of New York, which is kind of hard to do, I know. This is where we're at. You can come see. Uh, you you can come see me perform. I don't know. Maybe I'll even be uh, near your hotel. I'll sing on the corner if you come. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes to please. Um, this is cool, my friend. This was really awesome. And so many yeah, people. Yeah, what a wonderful conversation. Thank you for having me tonight. Oh, it was my pleasure. My pleasure. I love it. And uh, it was just bouncing off each other as if we there was no time passed between when we were in the t PBS studio chatting. Uh, and what do we got on PBS? Like six minutes. Now we get like 90. <laughs> That's one of the things that I love about doing this because, yeah. you know, being communal, being a conversationalist, right? And sometimes those little quick segments, you know, you can get certain things out of it, but not enough. Uh, New York is great. Um, never miss an opportunity to see live performances or vineyards are open, operating at full capacity. Yes, a lot of them here in the States are. Uh, that's why Matt's coming to the States quickly. Exactly. Uh, thanks Long for coming. Can work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I do have a sidekick here, my friend, who joins us every night. And I usually show him towards the end. I know we've talked a lot about old school qualities and things of that nature. Mr. George Burns was in the house tonight. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yes, he very well. What's he, 110? He's about 110. And of course, you remember yeah. when he played God in the movie. Uh, he's got a cigar. Yes. Talk about dapper, huh? He, he Always said, a handsome man. This is one thing I've yeah. learned. He's got the red pocket square too. I, I love seeing he? that. 
doesn't yeah. he? And he says, you did good, kid. You did good, kid, tonight. <laughs> This, uh, my aunt collected dolls, and when he turned 100, there was a limited edition uh, doll. And um, my upon her passing, my cousin gave it to me, and then sometimes I show it on the show and puts well, a smile on have, people's faces. If you ever have kids, you can pass it on as well. You just pass everything down. Uh, Maureen yeah. says this wisdom, hopefully, too. This show has been wonderful beyond words. Thank you, Maureen. You're always here every night. Thank you, Jim, for leading such a great conversation. And thank you, Matt, for treating us to your wonderful music. Thank you, Maureen. You know, you talk about paying homage to some of those folks um, who uh, like the steel workers and people like that. Maureen on the yes. front front lines as a nurse in the hospital system in Arizona during of work. COVID and all of this, uh, the things, the stories she could tell, you know, bless people like Maureen uh, and, and she's retiring. I think she said in December, uh, we're all going on a uh, lovely cruise too. They're all excited about it. We're going to go on a cruise next, hopefully next year is what we're looking at with a lot really? of viewers and some of the guests are coming That's super too. super cool. Yeah, if you're not, Please do invite me. If you're not booked, yeah, come join the Gym Master Show Levity Cruise. They're, they're all excited about it. Thank you for, uh, thank you both for a wonderful evening, Matt. Love your music uh, and your thank voice, you. Sherry Larson in Kansas, and uh, Mary Bishop says, "Wonderful conversation tonight. Hope to see you in Florida, Matt. Best wishes, Linda. Thank says, you, Mary. Please do come back, Matt. You have a beautiful voice." Jane, where it's like 4 a.m. in Sweden. God bless you, Jane. You're a levity. Thank you, Matt. Come back and sing a little more for us as well. I am waiting for Jim to crack out his guitar, and we will do something live on air. That sounds really that you heard that he is not going to do it. I can tell you're just sloughing it off. No, <laughs> not at all. It's about you tonight, Matt. <laughs> oh, here we go. Nice try, pal. Nice try, pal. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, Alessandra here says, uh, thanks for coming, Matt. It is great. You All guys were a wonderful, like seriously, audience. thank you for having me and wonderful meet some of your recurring like fans. It's, it's very, very the cool. Regular, the the levities, right? Yeah. And anybody that watches this later on, cause I know you're going to share the links and everything to yes, our uh, gym masters TV channel. Anybody that's watching this. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Breaking news. Because he made this appearance on the show, they are now booking him in Hong Kong yeah. <laughs> and Australia. Sydney. Um, we have viewers in those places, too. Um, no, I got I to gotta take the hose out of my pool. That's what I'm telling you. Is that what do. that was? Yeah. <laughs> I, you're being hosed Sorry. live on air? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know I'd have such a good conversation with you. I thought we'd be uh, done in 40 minutes. <laughs> uh, Kath, I know. It just lets you know. Awesome. It, I, I appreciate it. As are you, Matt. Uh, I may see you in Las Vegas, Matt. Kathy in Cleveland. That's vacation time. Thanks for a great show. So she might come out to see you in Vegas. And Alessandra says, hoping to see you coming to North Carolina soon to perform. Yes. Do you know if Absolutely. North Carolina or Vegas or any of those places? Yeah, are we usually play. Uh, so we are playing Las Vegas for sure. We're also probably playing in Raleigh in North Carolina. Oh. Yeah. So uh, we will be we will be around. I'm like a bad penny. Eventually, I'll show up. That's. <laughs> uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, amazing evening. Love your smooth and silky voice. Thank you. Not bad. Not bad at all, Matt. Uh, this was really awesome, my friend, and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all the time. Chatted for about an hour, thirty eight minutes, and uh, every guest, every guest says, "Yeah, never, not, you're not. You're not, a, you're not exact. A minute, thirty eight minutes. A minute, thirty eight <laughs> and forty eight seconds. I know. Okay, quick, quick. Uh, we got eleven seconds. Get off. Two, 10, psh, nine, bumba, eight, uh, seven, six. six. Happy New Year. Uh, well, you're welcome to come and get some brownies when you're in North Carolina. She's offering homemade brownies. Perfect. So there you go. Feeding, feeding Matt. Um, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, my friend, and you enjoyed the time. Wonderful with me. to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for reaching out as well. Always lovely to chat. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. It's so great to see you again. And it's if, you know, it didn't even feel like an hour and 39 minutes and 24 seconds. Every guest says it never feels like that because we just let it roll freestyle and it's just conversational and it is what it is. So you just go with it. I right? think next time we'll see each other, we'll both have probably more gray hair. This is my uh, hypothesis. <laughs> 
that's his hypothesis. Don't you love that word, hypothesis? I love hypothesis. That word. Well, last time we saw each other, we were both like what teenagers. So yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, that was just a couple of years ago. If you noticed when I told people that it was just yeah. a couple of years ago when I interviewed Matt on PBS. So yeah. uh, nothing has changed. We've just gotten taller. <laughs> that's, that's about the it. Hair growing higher. That's about it. And the voices have lowered. That's about it. Uh, Matt, you're the best. Thanks for all the time. Thanks Thank for you very the, much, Jim. the levity and the great conversation. I wish you and your family continued blessings and joy and um, keep doing what you're doing. And we'll keep the porch light on for you, my friend. Welcome back anytime. <laughs> and as I say to all the guests, now go stretch those legs, get the circulation going. And I do hope we break bread again and uh, connect in person. That'd be really cool. Awesome, man, Jim. And to you and your levities, thank you very much. Have a great, great rest of the summer. And you see too. you next time. All right, Matt, you take care. Be well, my friend. Take care. Take care. Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. Matt Dusk live from dawn to dusk. Good comments from everybody. And uh, thanks for all of this energy. Uh, we had a really fun time, didn't we? Um, Matt and I have known each other for quite a long time, <laughs> number of years, number of years. And again, the first time we met each other was when he was, uh, he came to the United States and he had a PBS special going. And uh, I was tasked to interview him on American television on PBS, Public Broadcasting Service, Public Television, which as you guys know of the many hats I wear, one of them is with public television. You know, some of you also asked some of the other things that I do. Well, in addition to my work on public television, I also host a lifestyle travel TV series that airs on CBS stations and CW stations and, and Fox stations and independent stations. I do a TV news magazine show uh, with my co-host Doug Llewellyn, who hosts the People's Court TV series. Doug and I have worked together for years with this television news magazine show out of New York and daily radio shows. And um, did a radio show for many years on iHeartRadio and have worked in television radio in many ways, shapes, and forms for years, emceeing at Carnegie Hall and many other places, uh, and do a lot of incredible freelance work as well, in addition to all of that work in this industry currently. And of course, then how crazy to launch this show on top of it. <laughs> this show is like a full-time experience and I love every second of it. It's a lot of work putting it together, uh, getting everything, you know, just a lot of work. I, I was working up to the last second uh, all day today, I was on the air on the radio with my professional work uh, interviewing several guests uh, in New York. And then here we are with all of you, Matt in from Toronto, and uh, we had a fun time. <laughs> Neither one of us are old. However, <laughs> we have, we're a little older maybe than we were when we first met. So I would say that Matt and I are seasoned veterans of what we do. That's a good way to put it, right? We're seasoned veterans of what we do. It was fun. We had a lot of laughs tonight and um, good times. It was just like hanging with a buddy. And uh, as, as we've said, he's very talented. And uh, I got to get myself up to Toronto. You know who's not here? Merlin from Ontario. Merlin, where's Merlin from Ontario? I'm sure she's going to watch this in the archives. Um, Merlin, I know, would normally be here, but maybe something took her away. But Merlin, Ontario, um, she's going to love this episode. And everybody and anybody who has, uh, boy, my hair is getting long, huh? <laughs> it's getting long, but cool. Um, another great show from Linda O'Dell. Good to see you, Linda, watching in St. Augustine, Florida. Beautiful area, beautiful area. Um, you know, the guest we had last night, we had veteran, award-winning television and film voiceover artist, Harlan Rector. Harlan is extraordinary. I was listening to more of his work today. I can't believe, he did uh, things for Harry Potter. He was the voice of the History Channel. I mean, incredible work as a voiceover artist. I've done a lot of voiceover work myself. 
And uh, I've always admired and paid homage. Matt and I were talking about some of those in our in respective industries who sort of came before us and paved the way, you know, the real veterans before us who paved the way. And Matt really, you know, pays homage to them, the Tony Bennett's and all the others. And I do in my industry too. Harlan Rector, if you didn't see that episode, we played a lot of his, um, not all of it, but a lot of his voiceover work from commercials, promos, movie trailers, narrations. He's also a brilliant caricaturist, celebrity caricaturist, and a beautiful author too. And we talked about that book, I Matter, and just really, really fantastic. He was great. So thank you very much, Linda, for being with us. And Sherry Larson, thank you for having Matt on. A wonderful person, great music. Yeah, if this is the first time you have learned about Matt, that's one of the cool things about our series is I bring on guests who uh, maybe you know and you have followed and you're fans of, and sometimes you get a chance to learn a little bit more about them um, or meet them, learn about them for the very first time, which is very cool. And then other times, maybe you know snippets of who they are, and now you've learned a lot more. And um, it gives you a different perspective. So this is like one big family here. Your host, the viewers who are watching live from all around the world, and those who watch in the archives later. And then the guests who I bring in, I invite the guests. Uh, to come in and to join the Lovety family and join the party here. And you learn more about yourself, because you guys are very open, about me and about our guest. And I think that's really, really cool when we get a chance to do all of that. Um, it is like a big party, like a family. You guys are terrific. Uh, Kathy Short in Cleveland says, I enjoyed this show very much. Have a good night, Jim, and our Lovety, Lovety family. You too as well. And everybody who has uh, been commenting here, Crystal, good to see you. Crystal Nolan and I met each other when I was actually doing a project for PBS. And that was, um, you remember Crystal that night? I was uh, emceeing the band Chicago, their concert on behalf of uh, public television. And Crystal was at the concert with her husband. And uh, we met, we took photos and it was really, really cool. It was really, really cool. Mm. Uh, Alessandra says, okay, Jim, who don't you know? Uh, you know, if like Matt and I were talking, when you're good to people and you work hard and you have fun along the way, I mean, it's easy to take things seriously, but if you're good to people, you work hard, you do the right thing, you have fun doing it, you end up staying in touch with a lot of fantastic people. So when I had asked Matt, because I had interviewed him previously on television here in the States, would you like to hop on the show? You know, we have this new show we created and it's about 461 episodes now live, just about seven days a week. He said, absolutely. You know, tell me the time, the place, the date. How do I get on the show? And here he is. And we had a good time uh, with wine and all. <laughs> Great show, Jim. Jane, thank you very much. I hope you're smiling, Jane. Uh, we're sending you some levity. I know yeah, you've been down in the dumps a little bit, and I hope that um, this show and anything else that we say or do today um, and going forward puts uh, some smiles on your face, Jane, and lifts you up. Alessandra, same for you as well. Thanks, Jim. That was great. My pleasure. My pleasure. And uh, the brownies. You know, I think we're going to have dinner at Alessandra's house in North Carolina. She's going to make the tater tot casserole for us. And then she's going to give us homemade brownies in North Carolina. In North Carolina, we're going to have those brownies. Alessandra, do you speak with the Southern accent? See, I, I can't hear your voice. I can only, I try to, like, I try to think of what Jane sounds like with the Swedish accent and uh, Alessandra and Linda's voice and Anne's voice. Um, you know what we should do? We should have some of you make videos. And you can send us videos and maybe we can, you know, tell us why you love the Jim Master Show live and some of the things you love about it. And maybe we can play your videos. We have done that. Maureen was on. 
when we had our one year anniversary celebration with all those celebrity friends, all those special guests, remember that incredible three hour show we did uh, back in May? If you didn't see that epic one year anniversary of the Gym Master Show Live, gang, you got to check that out. It was incredible. We have we had so much fun. And some of the guests that were on Kathy Garver, who played Sissy on Family Affair, uh, Allison England was with us, Elaine Ballas. Uh, all these incredible folks that were with us. We had Owen Dara, Jason Thompson. I mean, so many great friends that were with us. Um, if you missed that episode, it's all in the archives. Matter of fact, this episode will be archived on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. So make sure that um, if you want to watch it again, you can see it again. Jane wants me to come to Sweden. As I mentioned, uh, my mother's side of the family, English, Swedish, and French. And then probably if you do some digging, ancestral digging, you never know, you could always find more. And my dad's side is English and Irish. She wants us to come to Sweden because my uh, great grandmother hailed from uh, Sweden, was a princess, lived in the castle, part of that royal family there in Sweden and Gothenburg. And uh, I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to learn You've been teaching us some Swedish a little bit here as we've been going along, uh, which I think is really beautiful, Jane. Um, yeah, so uh, Matt wants me to uh, strut the guitar and uh, play with him. I think that's a good idea. Maybe the next time we have him back on the show, we will do that. I think that's really cool. Uh, you're, things are better now for you. Perfect, perfect. You heard from Ryan and you heard from Jim and you're feeling better. Perfect. Perfect. We're all welcome to go to uh, uh, North Carolina and have some tater tot casserole and some brownies with Alessandra. I love that. Um, and you remember it was a great night at the Chicago concert, wasn't it, Crystal? Absolutely. Thanks, gang. You guys are terrific. All of these great comments. Um, Maureen says, I was in a good mood at the beginning of the show, uh, but now I'm in an even better mood. What a fantastic time. It went way too fast. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, I love comments like that. It lets us know we're doing something uh, great here. We're inspiring. Thanks, Jim. That was great. Thank you very much as well. A couple more, a couple more. Um, Great show. Good night, everyone. Thank you as well. And Alessandra speaks with that uh, Southern accent. So North Carolina, we're going to come to the Carolinas. And we're going to have some tater tots and brownies. How do you say brownies? How do you say brownies with a Southern accent? Brownies? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to, uh, maybe I'll do this whole show with a Southern accent. I'd like to do a whole episode in Spanish. Uh, I took Spanish in college and I forgot so much of it. I have all of the, um, you know, the um, audio CDs you can put in the car and you can listen to and and sort of remember some of the Spanish words. I, I'm thinking about taking maybe an adult ed course or something, or I want to be bilingual and I'd like to do a couple of segments in other languages, Spanish, maybe French. Uh, you want me to do it in Swedish. Uh, actually, there are a few words uh, I don't remember them now, but there were a few words I remember hearing said amongst the family that are Swedish. I do like Swedish meatballs. <laughs> Sherry Larson says, good night, all sweet dreams. You as well. Maureen always wants that big, tight, lovety hug. So there you go. Big, lovety hugs to one and all. Now I, uh, now how I treasure being a member of this squad called the Gym Master Show Live Lovety Squad. And um, love you all. And wasn't it cool? Matt enjoyed being a lovety tonight as well. Good night, everyone. Good night, my good friend, Jim. Good night to you, Jane. Uh, gang, we have a lot of incredible guests coming up on the Gym Master Show Live. Uh, I should have mentioned to Matt, if Matt's still watching or he watches this again later, Dina Martin, my dear friend, Dina Martin is going to be with us. You know, we were talking about some of the legends, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Andy Williams, and of course, Dina Martin, singer, actress, extraordinaire, brilliant entertainer, daughter of Hollywood legend Dean Martin. 
she's going to be with us this coming Tuesday, actually, this coming Tuesday. Now, gang, it's a special time. It's not the usual time we broadcast live. She's going to be my special guest. I'm so excited. I've had an opportunity to, uh, you know, be at various events with Dina and her husband, John, and I think the world of them. Um, they are dear friends with two guests, you know, actor Tony Lobianco, who is a dear friend, and Elise Lobianco, his uh, beautiful wife. They were on our show. They're friends with Dina and John as well. Dina is going to be with us next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, live. And we're so excited about that. That's going to be really, really cool. So uh, we invite you to check that out next uh, Tuesday. It's going to be really, really amazing. We've got some amazing guests. Uh, Hollywood film director, screenwriter, producer Bruce Reisman is going to be with us. Broadway expert and actress Kimberly Faye Greenberg's coming up, one of the uh, upcoming episodes. If you want to see some of the guests uh, that are coming on our show, do you know actor Scott Bryce from As the World Turns and Murphy Brown the series and much, much more? Uh, Emmy-nominated Scott Bryce is going to be with us this Saturday for a special afternoon edition of the Gym Master Show Live. Yeah, Scott Bryce is going to be here. You remember him from As the World Turns, the long-running soap opera, you know, and so many other great shows. He's going to be with us on Saturday. And then we have another incredible singer, jazz performer, and so much more. She is super excited. She is telling the world about this. Connie Jackson. If uh, Google her, Google her, YouTube, whatever, listen to some of her incredible voice, her incredible music. Uh, she was actually brought to us by another friend who was a guest on our show. Uh, you may remember, of course, uh, Terry Wallman, um, fabulous friend. Um, Connie is going to be on our show this Saturday night live. She's also going to perform live for us as well. So that is really, really cool and really, really exciting. And I can't wait to uh, have her on the show. And again, that's going to be coming up this uh, Saturday night. We're so excited to have her here on the show on Saturday night. And let's see who else is coming up. Oh, boy. You know, we have another Canadian guest that is coming up. Uh Seraphine Larrieri is going to be with us live from Canada coming up on Friday, Canadian singer and songwriter as well. And uh, tomorrow night, we have best-selling author. I'm actually looking at our YouTube channel. Let's see if we can take a screenshot of this and share this live on the show with you guys right now. Let's see if we can. I think we can do that, right? Yeah, let's see if we can do a screenshot of the YouTube channel, and you guys can see some of the cool guests that are coming up. Let's see if we can do it live for you right now. Again, now, now if you're watching this episode of our show six months from now, none of this matters. You can watch all these shows. They'll be archived by then. But there you go. There's the YouTube channel right there. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to it if you can. And let's see. There you go. So Let's see if we can make this larger for you guys. I don't know if you can, but anyway, so here you go. Here is, uh, there is uh, Seraphine, Canadian singer-songwriter, live from Canada, coming up this Friday. Um, really extraordinary performer. We're excited. That's coming up Friday. So look for that. And... Um, Let's see, who else do we have coming up? So many amazing guests that are coming up. We're so excited. It's kind of cool how we're doing this, right? We're sort of doing this live on the spot. What show is going to do this for you, right? Uh, if you have missed some of our past guests, check them all out. Connie Jackson is with us as well. Let's see, is that showing up? Yep, there she is. There is Connie Jackson. Let's see, can we make that bigger? No, I don't think we can. But there you go, singer and actress Connie Jackson, extraordinary Connie Jackson's going to be with us on Saturday night. Uh, she's award-winning, and she is really excited. She's going to be with us on Saturday night. I'm actually, we're pulling this up from our own YouTube channel, which is kind of good. And you guys that are still here having fun with us, we, we appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Who else is coming up? 
this is sort of like looking through a Rolodex here. Uh, and of course, Lynn Constantine, uh, she's amazing. She's a best-selling author. Now, uh, her pen name, you might not know her as Lynn Constantine. She and her sister, they both go under this same pen name of Liv Constantine. And best-selling author going to be here tomorrow night. And uh, that is going to be amazing. Again, this is all, you can see all of this on our YouTube channel, which is really, really cool. So again, check some of these, uh, some of these cool things out and all the other guests that are coming up. We've got a bevy of guests coming up next week as well. Uh, Crystal says, good night, Jim and everyone. Levity hugs, Crystal. I love that. Jane says, uh, good night, everyone. Good night, my good friend, Jim. Good night to you, Jane. Uh, Alessandra says, how about doing a travel show and visiting some of the Lovety family and doing shows from their home? Do you know that when I, when I started this series, one of the very first episodes, um, we actually don't have one of the, I think it's the very first episode when I just went live because we used to do this on Facebook and YouTube. Now we just do it on YouTube. We were, we were live. I think I did it from the cell phone and it wasn't as polished as this is now, like a television show. You know, we would just, we flipped the switch on Facebook and YouTube and just went live. And then we, you know, whatever came of it, came of it. And I was, I was on location on the Connecticut coast. I think we were out in beautiful old Saybrook and we were live and I was talking to the viewers and the viewers were chatting back, but the camera was flipping the picture sideways. So uh, we didn't realize until we looked at it afterwards that the whole episode was sideways. <laughs> it looks like it looked like we were on a boat in the ocean and we capsized. <laughs> so uh, we didn't save that episode. We have it. Maybe one day I'll show it to you guys, but we didn't keep it in our lineup of past episodes. But um, but we have done some on location. I know you guys would love us to do that. And there are some places that want us to come visit them. Some really cool places where they've invited the Gym Masters show to come and broadcast the show um, on location. And we're working with a team that represents a lot of Irish artists who perform in New York City. And some of them are going to be guests coming up on the show, but they've actually asked me to do the show on location where they're performing. So we're trying to work all that out. Of course, the Delta variant, all this other craziness is keeping things at bay still a little bit. But there are some really cool things we do have coming up for all of you guys. Where we're going to be doing more of the, you know, taking the show out of the studio because again, this isn't just an interview show where I just interview a guest. I pre-record it and upload it and that's it. This is a live, living, breathing entertainment variety talk show series, like a television show. So we want to go on location. I do pop-up shows. We've done holiday episodes. You guys know all that. We have the viewer interaction. It's really different and it's very special. We're very connected with you, the viewer, the audience. And, um, you know, and sometimes that takes time that takes even longer to build because, you know, we could just throw a quick video up, you know, and, and edit it and that's it. But all this work I've done on TV and radio, I love live and I love interacting with an audience and, and getting feedback and the energy. So that's why I love having all of you here and our guests here live. Uh, sometimes, you know, if a guest isn't available when we're live, we can pre-record. Uh, I'm going to be taking some vacation. We haven't taken vacation in a long time. I mean, a really good vacation, at least a minimum of a week. And um, so we're going to be taking that soon and then have some shows that we have pre-created for all of you with amazing guests that will be airing. So you'll still have a great time with amazing guests. And uh, Maureen says, what a fantastic lineup. Thanks, gang. We toast all of you. We love all of you. And uh, you mean the world to us. Once again, we thank our buddy Matt Dusk for joining us here on the Gym Masters show live. It was terrific having him here. Cool time. Lots of great music. Lots of great chat. And uh, laughs, too. Lots of laughs. And there he is here. I should have asked him about the bathtub photo. 
cool shot. <laughs> Drink in tow. I like that jacket too. <laughs> and uh, it was cool having him on the show. And always, as uh, we say, a blessing having you here. If you haven't subscribed to a YouTube channel, we would love it if you do. As we say, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the lovity. Don't forget to find your Zen place. Mine is with loving family and friends, as well as cycling. I'm a cyclist. I love tennis. I love music, writing, gardening, sports, baseball, um, food, and swimming in the ocean. This is the Atlantic, the beautiful Atlantic. And swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing in it, uh, floating in it, all of it. Got to drag me from that ocean. And my work in television, radio, stage, and film. Love all of that. Over the years, that's a Zen place as well. You're watching the Gym Master Show live, Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, which is a channel dedicated to entertaining, informing, educating, and inspiring. Gang, you are the best. Whether you're watching live or you're watching this uh, later on in the archives, thanks for being with us. If you enjoyed this episode or any of the episodes, give it a thumbs up. Thanks to those of you who have been doing that. We've been noticing that. That really is magic for us. And also uh, leave a comment if you enjoyed this episode as well. Night, everyone. Night to you as well. Alessandra with her tater tots and delicious brownies in North Carolina. Good night, gang. We love you all again. We'll talk to you real soon. And join us again tomorrow night right here on the Gym Masters Show Live where we do everything we can to uh, entertain, inspire, motivate and celebrate life and living. Good night, gang. Be well. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Gym Master Show Live. Take care.